Hey everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost, and today we're going to do a couple fun things. We're going to review the results of the gluing of the beads down um, and top coated to seal them in with glossy accents, triple thick, and Mod Podge, which is the last one. And um, just a reminder for anybody who's interested, I still do have uh, some uh, fabric packs. They are beautiful uh, cut pieces of fabric, all sorts of different types, great to use for junk journaling, um, a wide variety, 40 plus pieces, free shipping, priority mail is included, plus you get the triple bonus of the um, antique handwritten letter, the vintage um, advertisements, and vintage stamps. Oh, can you see that? I don't can't see any of that. Okay, because we're zoomed in so close. Sorry. Um, let me just make you there for a sec. Okay, so do still have some available in my Etsy shop if you're interested. Um, grab them while they're available. And let's just take a look at these. And then we're going to um, do a little repair to some oopsies that I did in a recent journal. Um, I just thought I'd show you my attempt at fixing that just in, in case you ever run into that same problem. Um, hopefully it will be an easy way to fix it. Okay. Um, zoom in. Okay, so we made these little um, altered paper clips the other day, and I glued some beads down. I put some, um, oops, okay, let's knock everything over first for demonstration purposes. Uh, Fabrifix glue to glue them down, and then I, I could turn the paper over and stuck the beads and stuck the paper in the with the glue on it in the beads picked up the beads but some of the beads still felt a little loose like they might come off so I thought well maybe we could seal them we could put something on top so this we tried glossy accents that's this first one here's the results and I would say it feels very smooth and sleek and it looks glossy on the top so I think that's a pretty good win I think that that's a that's a go that's a go yes um, the next one is with triple thick, brilliant brush on gloss glaze. I think it's kind of like triple, uh, a glossy accents works very similar to me and um, also feels and looks very similar to me. It, it does the job, seals those little babies right in there. Nobody's running around. All is good. Okay, or all is well. And uh, the last one, I don't have my little Mod Podge bucket here, but it was Mod Podge on the top and I was really the least... I, I didn't think this one was going to be nice or work, but I honestly don't see an appreciable difference. So probably, I don't know. I mean, whatever you have on hand, if you have any of those three, they will, they will all work. Are you okay, Sonny? He's having like a little coughing moment there. He's fine. Yeah, he just woke himself up from sleeping. Um, snoring, I think. Okay, all is well in the pup department. All right, so that is the results. I would say they all look great. They all seem to work, and they all, and it's dandy. Moving right along. Um, okay, so um, it was this journal. Let me back up. I can't see squat. Okay, it was this journal. And let's just say Mama Bear here did this. This Okay, you're... This happens. It happens to a lot of us. If it happens to you, there are many ways out of it, but here's this one way out of it. Um, I know exactly what page is. Uh, okay, so here it is. And the obviousness of this is, this is upside down. Okay, and uh, I was not paying attention when I was assembling my um, signature pages, so it went in upside down. Now, um, this also happens to be the back page of the front signature. So there's the front and there's the back. Now, I could totally remove the entire page. I could totally cut the strings. You know, removing the entire page would be one way to fix it. Um, leaving all the rest in place and just going with one less page. But I don't want to lose the page and I like the front page and I don't want to lose the front page. So how can I salvage the back page? Carry on. Life can be wonderful and all is well. Okay, so this is my idea. We're going to, we're going to, not remove it from the spine. We're going to cut it. We're going to cut it out right there. Oh boy. I don't know. I hope this works. Okay, I'm just going to use this cloth in here so I don't cut the back pages. And I, I, this is a belly band yet waiting to be filled, so I do want to use that as well. I don't want to destroy that. Oh boy, here we go. Just be a little careful. Make sure you don't cut anything you don't want to cut. Probably better to do some other surface under. You could use a, like a couple book pages or something too. And I want to leave enough of a little lip. Cause I, I got a couple ideas on how to do this. So I'm not going right on the spine edge, but just sort of maybe a quarter of an inch away from it. 
and now the page is free and it can float off and do other things. But no, no, wait, page. We want you to be back in action right where you are here, but the right way. Okay, so this is torn, not attaching well there. Not bad. Let me flip it over. What do we got over here? Okay, not bad, but I think we're going to do some disguising. This is a uh, raggedy edge. This is a straight edge. So the two don't meet well together. So I need to do some type of repair in there. And I think I'm going to grab some washi tape to do this. I think it's probably a good idea. Um, I've just got some random stuff here. This just has a white script on it. See that? I don't know. Got it somewhere. Probably Hobby Lobby. Bought a roll, a whole bunch of them in a tube or something like that. Or bought it on eBay or Etsy. Um, now I'm, I'm feverishly looking for the edge of the tape. Very hard to feel with fake nails. Let's see. Oh, there's something. Oh yeah, we got it. We're good. We're good. We're rolling. Life is grand again. Okay, so now we know that washi tape is low tack tape. So we're going to add some extra glue to make it stronger tack tape. All right. Probably going to do this on both sides too. And that's, that's what I mean. It's going to be a pretty easy fix. I'm going to do Scotch Create glue stick. This is a very strong glue stick. It's a permanent glue stick, but you can also use Fabrifix. That would work. But I would definitely put some other form of glue on the back because of the low, low tack tapedness to it. Okay, here we go. All right, there we go. We go. We go. We go. Well, okay, but good. All right. So I'll, I'm just going to tape the first half here over here because I can see it before I glue it down. Get that in there. That's going to be my bridge. I want to get it as close as possible, but not impeding. I still want the signature to be able to be opened. All right. Okay, so that seems to be good and in place. And we're almost home free. Let's flip the page this way. And these I can pull over the top. Can you see this? I think so. Uh, they're a little longer. You could trim them at the top or just pull them over for extra anchorage. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Going the extra anchorage, anchorage maneuver. Now, we have this going on here, so I think I'm just going to also run a piece of washi tape there with the extra glue, and that will hopefully handle that entire problem. I'm gonna make it a little shorter so it lands inside the little folded over pieces. Okay, and that should be enough. Now, if you felt like that wasn't enough, you could come along and put another piece of paper over the bridge or a piece of material over the bridge to give it even extra strength if you feel you need it. I think with two pieces of washi tape that are extra glued securely, you should be okay. And I think I did this twice, so maybe we'll try a different technique on the other one in here. So this is what it looks like in the end. I think it looks pretty good. It looks decorative um, and interesting, and I think it's gonna hold well. So we are out of that little little fix. Now let's see if I can find the other one. Should be probably in the back somewhere. So I probably, oh, there it is, right there. Okay, so this one is not the first page. Okay, we have to make note of that. I don't know why, it's just important to note that. Um, I'm going to lay this in here again. I have to, I, I'm going to remove it. This one's a little tighter to the edge, of course, of course. And I'm looking now for this blade that is still out. Okay, get in there and snuggled in because we don't want to cut papers below it. It's a little tricky to cut without cutting the other papers, but be ginger. Oh boy, there we go. Oh, I hope this is going well. Going to hit the holes. No, oh, okay, that wasn't the greatest cut. Okay, no. As we can see, it was a foible. Okay, here we go. One out. Okay, here we go. What's going on? Oh, I'm going to cut it from this side. Why didn't I just cut it from this side? This would have been so much easier. Don't cut through, Pam. Don't cut through. Okay, come over here. This is going to be interesting how she gets out of this one. All right, I think I know what I'm going to do. I can see my crazy plan. I'm, I'm, sac I'm not sacrificing the holes. I want to keep... The holes sewn in because I don't want to remove the other side of this page, which is which is here, and we want that intact and to stay in place. Okay, so queso. No, I, I wasn't saying queso. I must be hungry. Um, here it is. Here's where it came out. Now I could do the turnaround and do that. But there's not a lot here to bridge with, but I think this time I might try a fabric bridge. 
I'm just going to try it. I've uprighted it. I've confirmed I'm in the upright position. Yes, we don't want to be doing that multiple times. I think the easiest thing would actually be seam binding. That would, but you could also do torn bed sheet. Let's, let me try torn bed sheet. What's this say? Summer? Okay. This is a piece of torn white bed sheet, and I rubber stamped the word summer on it. And I think I'm going to use that as the bridge. Now, it does cover up the envelope a bit. I wonder if I can make it thinner. We don't want to go too thin, or we're in trouble. So we're just a little thinner. Okay. I don't want to lose the word summer too much, so. Okay. Retracting. Okay, try and remember to do that. I forget all the time. Um, okay. Okay, we're making it a little thinner. Hopefully, oh, not too thin. There we go. Okay. All right, so we have this. That's better. Yeah, I think that's acceptable. Now here, there's not much to hang on to, so we're going to have to do a very, let's position this, and then we have to leave it. Maybe we should do this side first, huh? No, that's going to be harder to do. Let's do this side first. Okay. Now, where to put the glue? I think I'm going to put the glue on this, on the back side. Maybe this time I'll, I'm going to use Fabrifix, and I, which I moved into a Sugar Bells icing piping bottle, just because I get a thinner stream. Uh, I'm going to put enough down that I can smoosh it everywhere. I don't know how much I need. I didn't measure, so I'm going to I'm going to guess measure. Go lay it on my arm, glue my arm, probably. Get, that should be long enough, right? Okay. Here we come. Is it long enough? Let's just double check. I think it is. Oh yeah, we got plenty. Okay, so I'm gonna finger. I'm gonna finger smoosh this because I want it to be everywhere. Finger smooshing. Finger smooshing gives me a little extra. I can go back and re-finger smoosh to bring it to the edges because we do need crossover from one side to the other in order for adherence to occur. Okay, so let's try this. Remember we're going to try half on here, pick it up, I still, see i got to have enough sticking out, okay, don't dry on me glue, don't dry, okay, uh -oh. Oh. okay, got that, about halfway, okay, <sighs> okay, all right, there we go, okay, is it, is it sticking? I think I need more glue. I think I've shorted myself or it dried. I think that's what happened, it dried. Maybe it's a little easier with the glue stick because it doesn't dry as fast. I don't know, I don't know. Okay, so we got that down, that's good. Is that right? That's looking pretty good. Okay, so now let's glue the other white half of this so we know we got it good. You just gotta, you gotta use a lot of glue. Uh, a little, you gotta use a lot of glue to get the job done, I, yeah seem to want to adhere as well as I am noticing that it doesn't adhere as well as the other it's glue stick. Okay, let's, let's attempt this. Oh, you know, I didn't even do the idea I was going to do. Isn't that funny? Okay, I'm just going to tell you the other idea because I didn't do it. Um, I was going to make um, hinge bridges. Why don't I just do it? Why, do you, why, are you, why are you showing them the same thing with... Okay, so you get that, right? Okay, we're not going to do that. We're going to take the same darn thing and we're going to do hinge fix. So I'm going to get that pretty darn close, as close as I can get it. And then I'm going to make hinges. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And this stuff is drying so fast. I'm, I'm going to go back to the um, glue stick. And I'm just going to glue stick a bunch of this again right over the other glue. And that should be plenty. And then I'm going to take maybe three of these summer words. One. Oh, so these are basically fabric hinges I'm creating um, across the pages like this. So this is going to attach our okay. This is going to attach our pages together and everything's going to be fine. That was actually pretty darn easy. <laughs> I have to admit that was much easier than the other way. So if you're looking for the easy way, this would be it. Now, 
it might be, and I'm not, I'm not really covering up much of the picture down below here, but to, to fold it over, make sure everybody's in place, probably a good idea to do this side as well. There's multiple glues going on back here because I was a, a gluing Tasmanian devil, but I think it might be a good idea to do it here as well. Now we could, we could just do the summer words again. Yeah, we, well, why not, right? Yeah, okay. And we'll just do some more hinging on this side. I don't think it's absolutely necessary to do both sides, but it's not a bad idea. You know what I mean? In, in the realm of ideas that are out there in the world, this is not a bad one. There are worse. That's right. Eating all the brownies would be worse. No, I didn't, I didn't buy brownies this time. No, it was chips. Yeah, I know. Okay, so... And being aware of what you have going on here. This looks like a belly band, so I don't want to interfere with the belly band. Oh, God forbid, no. <laughs> Sacrilege. Okay. Okay. Two. And you can measure them out to be exactly equidistant from each other, but meh. Not that important to me, so I'm just going to glue them down. There I'll have the nice little fray. We like the little fray to make it look vintage and old and pretty. These would be cute coffee dyed too. You could do that. Okay. So now we have a lot of reinforcement there. That's working really well. And I would just come in here and like open that up to let it dry. Maybe, um, you know, five, 10 minutes or so, and then come back and open that and let that dry. And you're not going to have any problem with that page. So there's a couple quick fixes on how to get out of a, a tight little knot. And um, there were some other things. What were they? Um, hang on. Okay, just wanted to give you a little, a tour of this journal. I'm, I'm trying to actually remember how I made it. There's something inside, I think. Maybe not. Uh, but the inside cover on both ends is a piece, it's a master board that I made, made basically meaning I used a bunch of scraps, glued them onto a, probably a 12, or a, a regular eight and a half by 11 paper and glued little different things on it and did a little sewing it looks like around the edges here to adhere it probably glued it in and that gave the inside cover so laces and things like that on the outside just wanted you to have a an idea of what that was so i'm just going to look through here and see what else we need to do um there's some it's a very loose easy breezy style journal uh, I, I have to load a few things in here. I haven't heavily loaded the, uh, am I selling this? Did I decide I was doing that? I'm not sure. This is one of mine that I keep. Um, if you haven't seen this, this was a, I think this is the fun little thing. I did this a while back. I'm oh, giving you a little tour of this now. Um, but it opens up like that. Just did some rubber stamping on the inside with some script stamp and bumblebees and owls and ants and a little decoration on the outside. Um, so if you have a, a heart punch, you can make little flowers. You could put the, another petal here. I don't know if that would fit though, but, um, just kind of a fun little thing to make that you can clip onto any journal page with your handy dandy, ever so cute, ever so cute paper clip. This one just has a piece of fabric. Nope. I missed it. Has a piece of fabric tied, uh, to the end of it. There we go. Okay. And there's our late leaf lady. Oops, kind of far away. All right. So yes, this one still uh, needs to be stuffed with a few more little goodies, so we will do that. Oh, and I just found this really piece of, pretty piece of fabric. It's lace and sequins together. And I thought it would be fun to make a curtain page. Like one of those flip up pages. That might be fun. That would look, That would be pretty. Um, can I cut this with this? Let's see. Okay, that, that looks like it almost fits. And let's try this. Just giving you a little bottom edge here. That's kind of fun. And you could pink it or do something like that. But um, I think what I'm going to do is just make this very simple one. I'm just going to glue across the top here with Fabrifix glue. 
and I'm calling this a flip up. These are fun to add to your junk journals. Okay, get up there, flip up, flip up for gosh sakes. Okay, let's get that, it almost looks like a curtain. There, so we have that. And I think I would like to emphasize that a little bit. Am I, am I recording? Yeah. And, um, that might be pretty. What is this little thing? That might be perfect. Um, sometimes just to give it a little something like that, you know, at the top. And I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to give it something like that and just glue that down in place. You could sew it, you know, before, but I didn't. So here we are. And now I'm, I'm gluing. There's nothing cheating about gluing. Okay. Let's just get that straight. It's perfectly okay to glue. You are definitely a junk journaler if you are gluing and not sewing. Um, so just know that it's no problem at all. And it's actually very convenient to glue. Um, especially if you use a good glue that's going to hold. So, all right. Okay, well, these little fabric projects, a lot of glues will be fine for it. But if you really want extra security, you know the Fabri Fix or Fabri Tac or Beacon 3 in 1. And I think they've invented 10 others since I came along. But any fabric glue, I don't know if any fabric glue will work. But this one does just fine. Okay, there we go. This is my favorite glue. Okay, so lift it up. You could just leave this plain. But I think um, I will go ahead and just give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a something. You know what I mean? Uh, I had some, yeah, here we go. Here's some of that leftover Russian paper. And there was a piece of blue, blue. Oh, here it is. Okay, it's not exactly blue, it's more like a teal. But I thought I would cut a piece out and I would put that down so somebody had a nice place to write. So let me just cut a square or a rectangle out of here. And we're just gonna glue that right to the page. I'm guessing on the size, I'd say. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, there we go. And how about this, that looks good. There we go, let's see what we got. There, that's nice. So we can put it like that. But I thought I would take some of these pieces and just tear them up. Since I, I don't want to lose all this writing, I just love the um, foreign language papers from the vintage and antique books. They're just so pretty. Um, yeah, okay. Just tear a bunch of these out. For whatever reason, I don't know. What are we, nobody knows what we're really doing here. Oh, I have an idea on how to adhere this, which might be easy. I think. Let me see. Is that easy? I don't know if it's easy. That's not easy. No, we're going to do this. Yes, we're going to just have a bunch of random pieces of foreign language paper. And you can do this multiple ways, but I think the easiest cheater way to do it would be to just glue the center for our adherence purposes initially while we're designing. Okay, put it there maybe. Okay, that's good. And then I'm going to go ahead and just, um, actually, I'm just going to put some glue down here in this corner and then randomly, randomly just sort of have this stuff stick out. Yeah. Kind of like that. As long as it's stuck, we're good. Like little accents behind. And then I'm going to do this little accent area here. Okay, I need more glue that covered the, all the glue I had there. Okay, we'll get a little more glue going here, even a little on top of that thing. And there, there, okay, let's try that. That's cute, that's good. Okay, and then you can come in, you can even come over on top and add some pieces on top to soften those edges just a little bit, just a wee bit. Yeah, okay, cover that little edge. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, there we go. I'm just trying different angles on for size. Maybe that one's going to work well. I got to do something else that doesn't look right. Um, oh, you know, I have a little piece of this. Maybe I'll, I'll use little accents from this. Why not? We have it. That would look really cute. Okay, let's try that. Now I don't really know how to cut this. We'll just we'll just randomly make some focal points out of this to marry everything together. Okay, I'll just cut out some pretty lacy foo-foo stuff here. Okay, 
I'll just cut that in half. I, I don't need much. It doesn't take much fabric, really, when you're junk journaling. No, no, just little bits, little bits. Okay. I'll just put a little gloobie gloober down there, a little gloober accent. Okay, there we go. There, that kind of softens up that whole little corner, just giving it a little accent like that. So now we have this little area. Now you can come in here. These are not glued down, but you can just put some glue down there and glue it down. Let's just wave it in there and get it down. Okay, a little came out. We just use the old roll technique to remove it before it gets too dry. And I think we are good to go. And then we have this. That's very nice. Did I have a little? I do have a little piece. I maybe want to put one there. No, we're going for overkill. I need something though. Something. And I think it's going to be a bling thing. Let me go to my bling drawer. Where are you, my bling drawer? Here you are. Hiding, hiding. This is the bling drawer. I just want to put some, I know what I want to put there. Maybe these guys, because they're kind of flat gold. It doesn't really go with the silver, but it might be noticeable. Yeah, let's try that. Okay, just a little bit of glue. Not much, because it'll go right through the lace, but just enough to have it grab. And you can, like, lift it up and let it dry and stuff like that. I, I want to put it on the diamond angle. I don't know why. This is, it's really important right now. It's going to make all the difference. There. There we go. So now, it's like it has a little tab. And somebody might go, oh, I'm supposed to lift that up, and there this reveals this. So there you go. That is a flip up or a drawbridge, I think they were called. Um, no, no, the drawbridge comes down and the flip up is like the car trunk, something like that. Okay, there we go. And because we're not finished and we're just crazy and goofing around, we're going to put matching these up here to, so we can blend the gold in with the silver like it was all intended. I know gold and silver living together happily. The cats and dogs living together. <laughs> you know, anybody remember that movie? Who remembers? Somebody remembers. I remember. I think I remember. All right, let me stick that there. I'm going to do three just to give it a little pizzazz. You know, they say in art, threes are good things. I don't know why, but threes are good things. So there you go. Just remember that. You heard it probably elsewhere. Um, there we go. We have that. And we are golden and silver with our flip up. Okay, so there you go, folks. Let me see if I can find Mr. Snuffer Pants, who happens to be right here in his little Betty Bye. Do you have anything to report? Yes. Yes, I have something. Okay, let's close the scissors so nobody gets injured. Okay. <clears throat> yes, I'm moaning. Hello, everybody. It's Sunshine, Cub, Pup Reporter. And, um, I did I tell you I got my face washed? Yeah, look at that. Look at the face wash. Oh, yeah, dandy, all squeaky clean. I'm almost avoiding going to the groomer, but I don't think it's going to work. I negotiated with Mom. If I let her wash my face, that maybe we didn't go have to go as soon. But I don't think she's buying it. She's like, something about long toenails. And um, I'm not, I'm not, this is too warm for the bathing suit weather. So we need to be shaved down. I think we talked about this already. It's sounding very familiar to me, but you know how it goes. Okay, so that's the, the pop, the cub pup reporter report on this day in Florida from the paper outpost. Thank you very much. Take care, everyone. Happy crafting. Okay. <clears throat> well, there you go, folks. Thank you so much. Um, and re remember that I would say the glossy accents, the triple thick and the other thing, Mod Podge, seem to work equally as well. So whatever you have, you can seal your beads on top. So glue your beads on and then seal your beads and you should be happy, a happy camper. And you can play with all those beads that you've been collecting over the years and you have no idea what you're going to do with them. Do stuff like this. It's really fun. And you can do this, like, um, let's say you have a really pretty picture. You can do like a cluster of beads as your corner protectors like kind of like an accent or just like all the way around framing that would be really pretty too oh that would be really pretty wouldn't it yeah that's a great idea okay um 
Uh, so if you don't know, I have a free monthly emailed newsletter. You get a free digital image emailed to you every month along with a checklist of supplies, a note from the bookmaker which explains what a junk journal is and how to use it, um, and a page list of ideas on how to break a blank page as well as junk journal tips, updates from me, and um, uh, peeks at my new digi kits coming out every month. So um, all the links are down below in my description box. And um, I, my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. My podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays, new audio material. And you can watch video podcasts every day of the week um, on Spotify. You can listen to the audio podcasts every day of the week as well. And um, I have an Etsy shop where you're going to find journals and bundles and kits like my uh, fabric, fa fabric packs right now. They're available. Um, um, when things are available, they'll go up for sale there. Sometimes I make announcements. Sometimes I don't. I just put things in there. So take a peek every once in a while if you're interested. I have sell digi kits, which are printable, downloadable images. And you print them out at home, and then you can use them any way you like in your artwork. They're themed. They're five pages each of multiple pictures, um, like birds, Victorian, dragonfly, celestial. There's over 200. And I also sell fundals, which are collections of old and interesting papers. If you would like those to explore, there's 100 plus pieces in each fundal. And you're going to find some interesting things like antique journal and um, here's like piano roll paper, uh, handwritten script, um, music papers, dictionary pages, um, vintage and antique book pages, all sorts of fun things in there um, for you to create your junk journals with. And um, uh, I have an Amazon shop, so if you're looking for favorite tools and supplies that you see me use here on the Paper Outpost, I do try and put links to those in there if I can find them. And um, if I, uh, that does help my shop if you use my links, but you do not pay more for using for buying the items. Like it doesn't cost you more if you use my link. That's what I'm trying to say. So it's kind of a win-win for everybody. And um, what else? Um, I have a merchandise shop, so if you're looking for, if you like the phrase create with reckless abandon or everything is a, I was, I was going to say everything is a t-shirt until proven otherwise, everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise, you can get that on a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, a zipped hoodie, a mug, a tote, or a water bottle. Just trying to find that thing that we glued in. What was it? It was the last page. There. There. Still holding solid. Feels good. Yep. There's the repaired page. Just testing the integrity, making sure it's glued down well. Did that one well. And then there was another one in here somewhere, right? I know, I've lost it. And um, you can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Facebook group. Um, come and join our Facebook group. We're doing a lot of fun over there, doing weekly and monthly challenges, as well as seeing what you guys make from these videos. And also um, remember most of all that fun can be simple and find what you made, because if you can't find it, it's gone forever. But um, I did make it, you saw me make it. You saw me fix the page, where'd it go? Do, do, do. Oh, it's that bluish page, right? Oh, it's probably, yeah, here it is, right here. This was the hinge technique. So you can do fabric hinged hinges as well. You could also do a big strip of fabric, but I didn't want to interrupt this um, and uh, pot, double pocket design too much. So you can also do it in here, just make sure it's, it's free uh, and it's not all glued together. You have to check it a couple times. Okay, so there you go, folks. Um, create with reckless abandon, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.